the founder and director of Gigi Enviro, Larissa Rose. Hello to everyone who's aligned and joined in with us. That's fantastic that you've um, kept accountable, whatever time zone that you're in. So brilliant to have all you guys here. That was a pretty rad intro. Thank you, Mick. <laughs> and amazing, the Dan Dan group. I'm going to call you the Dan and Dan. Danielle, that was fantastic. Um, there's some beautiful alignment, which I'll help create that connectivity a little bit with some of the things that Danielle said, which is so valuable and important inside the work that we do with our clients and also some aspects that Dan brought up as well. So brilliant to have you here. Ta -da. So yes, my name is Larissa, sometimes known as Riss, <laughs> and I started an environmental consultancy company around 11 years ago now, and we have just recently rebranded. And before that, we were called Glowing Green Australia. And we had this beautiful globe uh, logo with the leaf on it, which was quite a funky looking thing to do probably about 11 years ago when you were sort of this clunky, weird job, an environmental consultant. And everyone would be like, well, what is that? What do you do? Like, what are those things that you do as a consultant? Even the word itself um, sometimes depicts this freelancing entrepreneur. So Glowing Green Australia, we just rebranded uh, the beginning of September. And I'll tell you a little bit around the purpose for that as well as we move through my quick 17 minute chat, nearly 16 now, um, on why we um, did that whole process of moving it. So I started it 11 years ago, literally when I was in the middle of my master's degree, I had this little epiphany. Um, I was at a really, you know, impactful, purposeful time in my life. I was an independent mother. I had two children and I had already been working in the environmental field, but I knew that I needed to be as much as a purposeful, impactful, engaged mother as possible. So I thought about, well, what is it that I can do and enable to really build out a business model that can support me while I'm on my journey, but also can add value to contributing to creating some environmental impact and change for um, businesses and clients. So out came of my registering while I was in my economics class. Um, at Bond University, I started my um, industry, um, I started my company name. And from there, um, just did that process of being a bit of a sole trader, getting across the line, those projects and jobs that you needed to do. And one of the main things that um, I will highlight is that back then being an environmental consultant, you kind of danced with the devil. And what I meant by that is, is that you had to work a lot with the heavy carbon emitters of the world, which is predominantly the mining industry and sector. So about 12 years ago, they actually had the, probably the biggest, most prolific portfolio of work for you to go from being a graduate to work in an environment portfolio was with some of those big, big emitting companies. So I um, have danced with the devil. I haven't actually worked for a mining company, but I've um, worked on projects where mining companies have been involved in obviously impacting our earth to some way, shape and form. Um, and that was really a lot of the work that we had to do as environmental consultants back then. Um, we were just pretty much working on compliance legislation and we were just helping businesses and companies ensure that they were meeting those rules pretty much is the best way to say it. So it's changed a lot and um, my business has changed a lot too and I'll, I'll go into a little bit around that. But we have got our alignment with our SDGs and as you can see down the bottom there, we've got five main SDGs that we have and it was great to hear about what you had, Danielle, in terms of your company and the clients, how you're starting to tick off all these other ones because it made me think about too, wow, probably some of those businesses and companies that we're working with are ticking off and aligning, you know, predominantly most of those goals. But I think it's really important when you're building a purposeful business model that you actually, first of all, identify like what are our core values? Where are we at? What are we doing and how are we delivering that? So these are our core values. We've got discipline, accountability, professionalism, execution and leadership. Now, they aren't just there for a glossy look on a website. They actually are aligned to how we employ people and also they're aligned to how we would actually fire somebody as well if it seemed appropriate that needed to happen. And that is because it's, it's so intentional and easy to be able to align that ethical alignment to those delivery of those core values in everything and anything that we do in our business model. And as I sort of chat through today, I'll 
talk about how we've aligned some of our SDGs to that as well. So here's my team. You can see us in the bright rad green look that I had going on on our logo for some time. The leafy look of the uh, days of glowing green Australia. We've done a lot of ecological assessment work and now we've probably progressed more into corporate side. So we make money, we help support businesses, they pay us and we deliver on those outcomes for them. So we're probably more so what you would call the enablers, um, the enablers of getting those outcomes for those um, companies and businesses and non-for-profits as well who we work for. Something really interesting and quite progressive that's been going on over the last, I would say the last two and a half years, has been inside our whole industry and sector going from a policy-based driven demand for our services, so how we get paid is driven by policy, all the way through now to progressively having it being a market-based approach model with, for our demand for our services. So, for example, there would be a lot of projects in the early days that would be driven by, let's say, the Queensland government's environment law and legislation to be able to tick off for their environmental licensing. So about 99% of our business model has pretty much been that um, up until probably about three to four years ago. What we've been really noticing is that the market is now squeezing and pushing up and is significantly driving... Um, a lot of shift and change in how business is done, but also the market is driving how other businesses need to do business. So that business to business engagement is really getting quite amplified. Um, you can see in that tiny writing there, a little bit around our industry and sector. It's an interesting read um, if you ever want to kind of look up about your role and in industry and your job. Um, the business research company have some um, interesting stats. I was pleasantly surprised when I saw environmental consultant because it's still one of those clunky words that <laughs> describe my role and job. Um, and as you can see, it's absolutely shifting significantly and this massive expansion in our industry. And I'm so excited and I'll, I'll share with you a little bit around what's been going on and happening in our business model. You know, we've moved in about 160% over the last 18, 20 months. Um, and that's been massively all market-based approach work and change. I'm so conscious of this time thing, Mick. <laughs> I'm such a rambler. <laughs> um, so, you know, let's get to the, the core of it. What is an SDG and how do we embed them? So we do a fair bit of work, very similar to what Danielle was talking about, um, where we work, thank you, 10. I got 10 in the house here. Um, where we work with businesses and companies to really identify and align how they can embed much more sustainable um, environmental practices and processes and systems and philosophies and really embedding some pillars. Um, and we really go through that process of asking them some significant questions around, you know, well, what is an SDG and how do we align that and how are we going to enable that? And also the important thing around marketing and branding and helping differentiate yourself in your um, business model and in your industry and sector is how we're going to communicate that and how that's going to have a purposeful and an intentionality coming across through your values as well. You can talk about your values, but you can add, you can see now that other layer that comes from what SDGs can do and trigger that across to your core values. So you can see here in this photo, I'll, I'll give you, I've just realized I haven't said much about the photos, but um, this photo was some work we did with Ocean Protect, Jeremy and Brad. If you haven't ever listened to their podcast, please have a listen. Um, and we were doing some really great podcast work with them and really amplifying the opportunity. Um, my other hat in industry is um, I know a lot about biofuels and renewable fuels. So we were having some really important chats around um, that. Ah, oh, 10 minutes, nine minutes, eight minutes. I'm gonna go for it now. I really wanna make sure I can give you as much value. So embedding our SDGs, here's number four. This is my heartfelt ethos and it triggers to our leadership core value is around building the leaders of the future. So about four and a half years ago, um, I am obviously part-time lecturer. Um, I do climate change lecturing at Bond University as well. Sorry, QUT, I know we're in your beautiful building here. Um, but I, I'm an adjunct lecturer and I teach climate change and I'm alumni of Bond. But in that space and time, I really identified the gaps when I left uni to the real world. But I was working in the real world as well. So what I was learning at university, I was like, wow, I've had to really pedal hard and learn a lot of stuff here. So I built a framework called, I call it Building the Leaders of the Future. It's really our internship mentorship program. 
it isn't just about learning how to write environmental reports. It aligns to really doing a lot of the work, you know, in alignment with what Dan has got from Trademark is around really instilling and evolving confidence in predominantly we take quite a lot of women actually through that program, not intentional, um, and really building them out. So when they work with us, we obviously plan and map out their projects of what they're going to do over the eight to 10 weeks. I've got one of my interns in here today. I just saw her then, Samantha. Um, and But we also stack on and build around where are you going? Where are you at? What are you doing? Working on the soft skills, self-worth, value, um, aligning, taking ownership. Are you putting enough content on LinkedIn? All these sort of things, which sometimes are overlooked and seen, but they're so valuable and important, especially when you're wanting to really build out your career and who you are. And sometimes it's okay. Some university students have no idea what they're doing, where they're going, where they're at. So we've built this. This is my heartfelt everything the leaders of the future. I'm really, really big on supporting um, all these students, not only just for building out and ensuring that my industry and sector is going to be as dynamic and engaged and has got these incredible people coming through, but also building the other important layer, which is that leadership layer. So that's how we um, work and align with um, SDG4. And that's clearly some of my interns over the last few years. We've got many, many photos all together. Um, and we do lots of videos as well. I make them do weekly videos and help instill and build their confidence. So number 11. So this is around some of the services that we provide at GG Enviro. So it's one of those things when I'm an environment company, I'm kind of already got this extra bonus of aligning to SDGs um, because it's what I have been doing and what we have been doing for some time. So a part of the sort of more regulation and compliance side of things is that we need to support a lot of development. And now this is not advocation on clearing land and developing, but it is a part and it is a backbone of Australia that we need to keep growing and building. It's about around how we apply, and this comes back to our core values, accountability and driving that leadership to really push companies to align to best practice management and pushing them to go beyond as well. So our leadership and accountability, our core values again, is to ensure that we are pushing those different types of developers in the construction industry to really level up and go to the next layer in terms of embedding SDGs, but also in terms of pushing past just doing business as usual behavior or just abiding by what the legislation or the rules are for them to do a certain building or how they manage waste. So for an example in that, we do a lot of waste management plans, which is around getting the tick off for a development approval. And we really pride ourselves on the Gold Coast. We are based on the Gold Coast um, to be able to really, really steadfast go that extra layer. And it's you know, we get haggled, we get all of those kind of things happen to us and we get squeezed, people want to do it better and can you do it cheaper than Tom down the road? But, you know, I've had to learn really to say no because that's not our purpose because we don't want to be working with people that we can't really level up. We want to make profit, but we want to be able to do that and not think at the bottom line, gosh, we got squeezed on that job and we gave all this great value adding. So, you know, that's, that's a big part of a philosophy that we have with that. Number 12, here we go. So another component of our work is really supporting different um, businesses and companies and non-for-profits. We've been working with a fair few non-for-profits of lately. A couple that I can't really mention yet, but I will soon um, when they get disclosed, so you'll see them all on our website. But they're doing a lot of work in the background. A lot of these companies want to do work quietly in the background to start working out where are we at? What's our carbon emission footprint? We want to get that sorted. But a lot of the work we need to do with them is to actually start identifying their whole supply chain. This comes into more of the circular economy part. So the first best ever hanging fruit that you can possibly do in your business model is to look at your supply chain. And then we come back to the fun science part around capturing data. So we do a lot of work where we do a lot of segregation work with people doing waste segregation. What is that? Where did that come from? Why are you buying it? Is there an alternative? If we purchase an alternative, yes, there's a different price metric on that. Might be a little bit more expensive, 
but we can build out and start talking and create a talking piece around your intentionality as a business to make impactful, purposeful change and taking accountability. But also you can go back to the supply chain and squeeze on them to make a change. I'll give you an example of that. Worked with a restaurant on the Gold Coast. They were very concerned about the volume of landfill that was going. They, we did an identification or segregation analysis, what you can see there. And we identified their little mini herbs, the little cool, funky herbs that you get on top of everything. It's all these plastic pots and things and styrofoam boxes that they all came in and they were left with them. So you imagine how much cubic meters per year a restaurant was having to manage to get rid of that. And that was a price point going out. So I just said, you're going to have to squeeze them and tell them, you're going to go to a competitor that has got a different way of delivering that product. And then you can start squeezing it. So they got an outcome on that. They decided to take all the products. Thank you, Mick. Products away. So that's another example of how we've supported some companies to do that work. Number 13, fun one here. This is a great um, intense time for us at the moment. We've got so much of this work coming through at the moment. We've been doing a lot of work in carbon neutrality, um, which is around, you may have heard the word scope, emissions one, two, and three. So that's really around companies and businesses actually being able to speak to and point to really state and validate that they're making um, impactful, purposeful change and they're accountable to it. So the Australian federal government has a platform called Climate Active and Climate Active is the only thing that you can actually point to to say that you actually are carbon neutral. So that carbon neutrality enforces you to have an emissions reduction plan, a little bit like the top 100 ASICs companies were once only the ones that were allowed to have or were forced to have, I should say, an ESG, an environmental social governance document. Now we are seeing everyday companies and businesses for tendering, they're doing their own due diligence to work together to want to have that disclosure to see, well, I actually only want to align with another business that's actually got some frameworks in place that is doing their tangible, impactful change, has got some vision and outlook over the next five years. One of them might be to go climate, climate active to become carbon neutral. So that's a big change that's going on in our industry. My favourite one, I've quickly got to finish, I haven't got long. 17 is partnerships, super exciting. We've got so many partnerships. It's another core fundamental part of our leadership core value. And this is an exciting one. We've just done a second launch with Palm Beach Surf Club. Palm Beach Surf Club um, wanted to take some progressive action around ensuring that they were removing all the single use. So they did something through Surf Rider. Then we looked at it and did identification and went, wow, those kids packs are full of plastic, aren't they? The kids use them for... 10 minutes, 20 minutes, there's a little bit of crayons hardly used, pencils used, stickers, put straight in the bin. We calculated how much that was probably per year, how many bins were filled with all these kids packs that got used for 10 to 15 minutes and decided let's change that whole program. So we worked with them and this is probably more of our freebie work, so to speak, um, to really um, create an environmental education sustainable leaflet working with an amazing local printer, using sustainable paper, sustainable inks, um, teaching and educating our kids. We did a community pencil case, so where we call in the community, all those old pencil cases and pens and everything that every parent knows, every year they get the pencil case and there's another 50 rulers in your top shelf. Um, so we did that project and now we've done, we've done a leaflet on reefs and we just um, released another leaflet um, the other day on deserts. So I know I have nearly finished my time now, but um, that, that's pretty much the last slide. The last slide is another info one, but that's us. And um, please feel free to hammer me with any questions for the Q&A. Thank you. <laughs> Went over.